What if tracking attendance was as easy as snapping a photo from your phone? No lines, no wait, just quick, secure, and accurate. An attendance system that runs itself with the security and efficiency reserved for airline ticketing systems. And it's virtually cost-free. This isn't just another tech tool. This is a smart, tailor-made solution for your classroom. Stick with me and I'll guide you through creating a foolproof attendance system that leaves outdated methods in the past. First, we need some QR codes. In a new tab, let's go to slides.new to create our student IDs. We'll delete everything there, close down the themes, we don't need any of that, and we'll go up to File and head down to Page Setup. In our Page Setup, we'll click on this and go down to Custom. And in our fields here, we're going to set up a size similar to what you might find on a cell phone. 6.5 by 15.5, so we're working vertically. Now we just need to go ahead and design our student IDs. Here, I'm going to use a square, and inside this, the word image with these double curly brackets. Down below that, right at the bottom, let's use first name, and then a space, and then last name. Again, with the double curly brackets. We'll open that up and make sure that that fits in. Copy and paste that. Make sure we have everything lined up and consistent. And then you can go ahead and add whatever other details you want in here. We're going to put one more image, but this time we're going to label it QR code. And that is our student ID completed. Now let's save this as student ID cards and open up a new tab and go to sheets.new. We'll start off with student ID. This is going to be a unique ID that's going to come through our QR system. Next up, let's just put in the details from the student ID card that we just created. So over here, we have our first name and last name, and then we have image, QR code, and expiry date. We'll start with those ones, and then we'll fill in some other details, making sure that the text part is exactly the same. So QR code needs to be one word with capitals in the same places. A student ID, first name, last name, their date of birth, photo, and so on. Now to get the photo, all we need to do is copy the drive link from our Google Drive. We can right click, share, copy link, paste that in place, and there's our photo. Just do that a bunch of times until you've got all your photos on. Now if you've got a lot of students, you might want to use a script to do this. Once we have everything in place, we'll go to the end of the columns, and we'll create a new header called QR code. This again needs to match this text exactly. Now for the QR code. I'll type out equals QR code, and you can see that nothing happens. To get the QR code, go up to extensions, add-ons, get add-ons, and then in our search, we'll type in document studio. We're looking for the one from digital inspiration, so go ahead and install that. Once it's installed, we'll go to document studio, open, and this is the add-on that's going to make everything work. First, we need our QR codes. So let's close that down because that has given us the ability to use this new function called QR code. We'll select just the student ID and press enter. And that gives us a link which leads us straight to a QR code. Now this QR code is just the student ID, nothing else. Let's re-enter the formula and type A2 to A. Press enter, and that gives us a full list of QR codes, each one personalized to this student ID. With our QR codes created, we now want to personalize each of these student ID cards and then send them out to the students. Before you do that, make sure you have your email address in here so that we can test it out. So once again, let's go up to extensions, document studio, and open. Now, if this is the first time you're using document studio, yours might look a little bit different. So just upgrade to the new version and it should look like this. We'll go up to Create Workflow. We'll call this Attendance. And it's coming from our Student ID Cards Worksheet, which is this one down here. Click Continue. We're going to process specific rows just so that we can test it out. And we'll click Choose Row Number Less Than, let's say 5, just to test it to see what happens. Click Continue. And now's the part where we create our personalized Student ID Cards. So we'll click on Create File. The document template is the student ID cards we just created. So we'll click Choose, Presentations, Student ID Cards. We can see five markers have been found, which matches these details here and these headers back here. Choose where to save them. I'm going to select the new attendance. If you want, you can choose a subpath. I'm not going to. The output name will be the student ID and it'll be a PDF. We want to share this with the email address so that they can have access to it and see the student IDs once we send it to them. 
untick the last one. We don't want to notify them by email because we're going to send a customized email directly to them and click on done. So that's our student ID cards created. Now we want to email them. So click on add another task and we'll click send email. I'm going from Gmail, send his name, or that's me. Email column is email address and the reply to, or that's me again. For the email subject, and this WYSIWYG here is what you see is what you get. So whatever we write in here is what they'll receive. Put in whatever email you want into here. I'm going to paste this one in here that says Kia ora, first name. We hope this email finds you well. We're excited to welcome you to Formula 24 for the upcoming academic year. We've got an attachment to this email. It's a student ID card. And here's some key points for the student ID card and how to save it to your phone. Make sure that this is ticked so that they receive the student ID cards with their email and click done. That's all the details created. So let's click on save and save and run. We'll click show details and select the rows that we want to process. We're only doing a test to see that it works. So we'll run two, three, and four just to make sure everything's running fine. We'll click run workflow and you'll see the time elapsing. And it's all finished within 50 seconds. If you look in the background, we can see three files. And if we click on them, we have a photo, the name, the QR code, and the expiry date. We can go ahead and run all of this. So if we go back up to extensions, document studio, and open, we have our attendance. Let's click on edit. And if we go over to run, it tells us that we have 22 documents remaining that we can create per day. So once the day rolls over, this will jump up to 25 again. Now, if you want more, we can upgrade to premium. We'll select our country. This is just a personal license just for me. And you can choose to pay yearly or you can choose to pay monthly if you want to cut down on the costs. For the standard edition, that'll give you 500 documents every day. So if you've got 2000 students, just run this over four days and activate license. With the Enterprise Edition, we can see we now have 2,000 documents available, 2,000 emails available, so we can run all of these with no problem. So I'll go back to the conditions, process all rows this time, and click continue. We're going to go with all of this. This is exactly the same as what we had, so we'll continue, save, and run. It'll ask us which rows we want to process, Select all of the other ones and we'll click on Run Workflow. That's going to take a while to run all of these, maybe a couple of minutes. And just like that, we have all of our details here. Now, I sent this to myself. So before you do run this, make sure you run it to your actual students. If we go to my email, here's all of the welcome emails that I just got. And it has the attachment as expected. Now your students can save that PDF directly to the home screen on their phone. So when they come in, they can just tap that so it's open and we can scan it. If they don't have a phone, well, they can just print it off and maybe paste it into their diary or journal and then show that when they walk in the class. Now the next step is how do we as teachers actually scan them in? Well, obviously we're going to need a phone, but if we just scan their ID using something like binary eye, all we get is the block of text saying their student ID number. So to scan them in, we're going to need to make something special. First, let's jump back to our spreadsheet and I'm going to quickly title this as attendance. Let's open up a new tab and call this scanner. Up the top, we'll put in some headings. Give this one a format of date time. And we're just going to duplicate that tab. We'll call this one scans. In A2, type in equals, open a curly bracket, scanner, A2 to A. Close with a curly bracket and press enter and we'll get nothing. If we type anything into here, then that's automatically going to duplicate in our scans tab. We'll see why that's useful in a bit. Now with this set up, let's go up to extensions, app sheet, and we're going to create our own app. Almost instantly, it creates an app for us, but it's not exactly useful. So let's cross that off and just have a look at the layout here. On the right hand side is what our app looks like. I'm just going to untick or unswitch this edit so that we can't edit things, but we can still use things. If we click on any of these, we get the students full details. And if we want to see their photo, we can click on that 
and it gives us their photo. And while that's good as a student management system in your pocket, let's actually change things around a bit. So first let's go to data and we can see that we have student ID cards. We want to add in the scanner and the scans tabs. So click on plus and up the top you should see scanner and scans. If you don't, you can navigate to it through the Google Sheets options, but I'm going to add them both here. For the scanner, we want the updates, adds and deletes selected and click add this table. We'll add another one, scans, and this time we want it read only. So we're going to set this up so the scanner is where we actually scan with our phone and the scans tab is going to show us what's already been scanned. So in our scanner tab, I'm just going to hide this away so we can see more. Make sure that the student ID is not the key. If it is, this won't work. The scan ID should be our key. If we go across to our formulas, we've got a unique ID. So every time we scan, it'll give us something new. Down here in today, that should actually be now. And click on save. And if we go back here, let's change this to date time. For the student ID row, if we go to the very far end, click scan, save, and then we'll go to our views. Now I don't actually want to see either of these views. So let's click on student ID cards. Now that's what we already saw and that was actually pretty useful. So let's move that to our menu navigation and let's delete our statistics. In the primary navigation, let's just show this as we go. So in the primary navigation, we'll click on create new, call this one scanner, and the data will be the scanner data. So down here we can see scanner. Click on form, and we can see we have a scan ID. Now this is unique. Every time we scan, it's going to create a unique scan ID. Here's the student ID where we can just input the details. And then here's the date time that it was scanned. If we click save and go back to our spreadsheet, we can see that this scanned. For some reason, we still have statistics showing down here. So I'm going to click save and that should go away. Now it's important that you make sure that this is clicked on form. And if we go down, we want auto save and auto reopen selected. So that's going to automatically save once you've scanned and then reopen the scanner ready for the next student. At the same time, we'll click on the settings, go down to view type options, and then go down to advanced forms automatically. So it's going to scan the QR code, put the details of the QR code, which is the student ID into the field, and then go to save, advancing as we go. Let's click on save. Now let's give it a try. Here on my phone, you can see that I've got an email. App sheet, here is your app attendance. I'm going to click on install attendance and then install. Add that to the home screen and here's our scanner. Let's just sync everything and click scanner and we can see the scan ID, the student ID and the date time. If we click this button here, that opens up the scanner and we'll open up one of our QR codes. Elena Ivanova scan, there's our details, and click save. It opens up straight back to the scanner, ready to scan for the next person, but we can make it even better. Back in our attendance app, let's go to the data, making sure that we've got the scanner selected, and for the scan ID and the date time, we're going to not show those two. At the same time, tick this required box and uncheck this one. Click save. This gives us a little warning, just saying that down the end here, we can't search for them, and that's okay. And now when we click on scanner, it opens up the scanner automatically so we can scan our student. It then reopens. Let's just turn the sound up. And that will continue scanning so students can come in one after the other and continually scan. We'll go back to our scanner tab and we can see all of these details have come through. Over in the scans tab, we don't have anything interestingly. So let's put equals, open that curly bracket, Scanner exclamation mark A2 to A, close the curly bracket, sorry, A2 to C, so that we get all of the details that we need. Back in our attendance app, we want to actually see all of the students that got scanned in by date. So let's go to our scans, untick these editable ones, click save, and then go back to our views. In the primary navigation, we'll click plus, create new view, scans. For this data, we're going to select scans and choose either deck or table your choice. 
I'm going to scroll down to group by date time and then click save. On the side, we can see everyone's grouped by the date. So on this date, all of these students were scanned in. If we want to know how many, we can click on this and click count. And we have seven scans for this date. Just go through and count all the students to make sure that that number matches up with the number of students in your class. If for some reason you have multiple scans like I do here, a lot of 1008, we can just go up to the Google Sheet in our scanner tab and delete the ones that are duplicates. Back in our attendance app, we'll click on save. And we can see just those two students came in. Now, if you want to see the time that they came in, let's go up to data. We'll add a new virtual column and call this date. The formula will be date of, in square brackets, date time. We got a tick and click save. Let's change this one to date time and this one to date. Click save. Back to our views, we'll group by date. In our column order, we'll change that to date time and click save. So we can see now that student 1001 came in at 10.57 and 1008 came in at 11 o'clock. Now this is a personal app just for you, but it doesn't take that long to get set up. So if you want one for each of your teachers, you can send this to them by going to the share button at the top, send that to their email address, and you can do that for up to 10 people as testers. Really, they're using it for real, but we won't tell anyone about that. If you want to actually implement this app, then you need to pay about $5 a month per user. So I just recommend going with the free version. And now we have a secure system where we can send the student ID cards with the QR codes directly to the students through their emails. They can come in, show us the details on their phone, and you can either be standing there with your app ready to go, or you can set this up on a spare phone, just sitting on the table, and then they can scan and move on. All of this gets saved directly to your Google Sheet, and if you're offline, then it doesn't actually matter because it's going to save it to your phone, to the app, and then once you get back online, it'll just sync directly to the Google Sheet. Now, if you want to filter this data and set up some sort of a dashboard for your administrator to see, well, we can easily do that in either Google Sheets or in Lucas Studio, so make sure you click this video here.